Got hold of these rednecks like you asked. Hey, although I've sometimes questioned you, Jeff, and Bond's existence and reason to be in this world, I've never thought that way about Anna and Lindsay, so please don't include them in the term redneck. By the way, where's Miss Lindsay? Oh, she's visiting her parents. Her grandma was in an accident and they're gone to Sussex for the week to help out. Oh, that's too bad. Give her my best. Hey, Mr. Dodd, I just wanted to take this moment to thank you for asking me to join the paint crew this summer. Um, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do for money and everything, it just, and we were lucky as hell for the weather we had, so I was able to put away two grand. This is only the second summer we've had this program. Do you feel like the work you've done uh, this summer in the community, well, we know it was profitable due to the uh, six weeks of sunshine we had, but do you uh, feel like you accomplished something? Or was it just one blur of a party? <laughs> Professor Dodd, man, I freaking loved it. I mean, we painted, what, six houses, two sheds, and a greenhouse? I mean, we could have painted one more house if it, if it hadn't rained that week. Well, that's kind of why I asked Seth to bring you all here for this meeting. As you five all know, uh, eco-development is a big part of my course. That's why setting out and doing the work you do for the money it brings and the actual benefits to the community, both in your pockets and some of the homes you have restored, is a win-win situation, in my opinion. As you may or may not be aware, I sit on the Municipal Council here and do get my fair share of complaints from people in my riding uh, over things you wouldn't imagine. Loose dogs, biting people, dirty backyards that create an eyesore, unsafe drivers, you name it, even spousal abuse. I, I should say we on the council, have gotten no less than 10 complaints on this one house. People are asking we do something about it. It's the house at this address. Have a look. Professor Dodd, is that even in your district? You're damn right it's in my district. And I have to do something about it before I get my butt kicked at the next municipal meeting. There are very powerful people back there and they want this house fixed up. That's where you guys come in. Remember I emphasized that you have to do one house pro bono? Well, this is it. You know, I want you to do it for free, guys. I want you to paint it better than any other house you've ever done. So when we do our overall report on the project, I have this one in my back pocket. Plus, it houses an elderly woman and her son. But the reports are th on them are that they can't afford to have it painted, so they're a prime candidate for this program. We only have to do one a year, and this is the one. Hell, this is a mansard roof beauty from the turn of the century. There's not many left, if any. It's an architectural masterpiece. Hey, Professor Dodd, we only have two weeks to paint this house, and if it rains, we're screwed. How big is the house? Don't worry guys, I've spoken to your other profs and we'll be slack on your course schedule after the two week break, so it'll give you extra time. Plus, if you can't do it all, do the front and north side first and we'll get to the south and rear next summer. All I want is when people drive by, it looks better. Political pressure is real. Have you ever heard of it? But Lindsay and I had plans to go to Boston this break. Hey, remember, this is a big part of my course. You guys do this, you get this one done, and you don't have to worry about your marks, okay? That's how important this is. Plus, when you signed up to this program, you knew there'd be a freebie, didn't you? I mean, we did, Mr. Dog, but I just never think you'd take away a break to go paint a house in God knows where. Never even heard of that place. What's it called again? It's, uh, it's called Havla. It's on the edge of the municipality. I mean, I've driven there before, but I mean, it's no big deal, really. Now, if you can all excuse me, I have to grab my journal and go at it. My next class starts in 10 minutes. Gotta go. Cheers. Now, this fucking sucks, guys. You were going to Boston. Well, what if it rains for a week? We're screwed. 
Yeah, I'm replacing rotten wood with wet wood is my idea of fucking progress. This won't be in summertime, you know. All right, calm down and take a riddling for fuck's sakes. We signed up for this. We were lucky enough to make more money last summer than any other summer I care to remember, and we get course credits. Now look, I don't know about you guys, but I don't see any way out of this. We just gotta go ahead, and we gotta do it. Jeff, you got anything to say? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, we don't do this. I fail the semester. My dad kicks my ass all the way back home to work in the family garage. I know we're going to do this. We have no choice. I have no choice. I've got to get back to class. Tough chance of concentrating now. My plans for spring break are shot too. Right, Seth? Come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> It's gotten worse, hasn't it? You haven't gotten this upset in a while, Mother. The goddamn plumbing. Can we call Mr. Delisle? I hate that man lover. He's so crass and rude. But I'm not stupid either. I see we have no choice. Silas, this house needs constant attention nowadays. You have to try and be a bit more on the ball when it comes to the upkeep around here. can't believe this house is still functional. What a piece of crap! Pull up next to the door, on the side. the door. Mr. DeLaw? Ladge? Well, hello, Silas. I was beginning to wonder if anybody was living in this place. I was starting to think this might be a crank call. 
It's no crank call, Mr. Delisle. Mother's having problems with the pipes under the sink. It's a lot worse than before. Thank you for coming all the way out here, Mr. Delisle. Not everyone wants to make the 15-mile run from Sonyaville to Havelock. Our electrician used to call it the back road hell ride. like Silas is letting me in. I'm gonna have to let myself in. Lodge, have a seat. After all, Silas is home. He can help me out. I'm gonna try to save Mrs. Crow here a little bit of money. What about my hours? Lodge, sit your ass in that goddamn chair and no back talking, you hear? Okay, okay. Hand me my teeth on a goddamn toolbox. <sighs> now, Mrs. Crow, let's have a look-see at that sink. gonna be fixed by working on the sink alone, Mrs. Crawl. Water hammer, I like to call it. That could be what's causing all the clanging and clanking that's ruptured this hot water pipe under the sink. I need to go to the basement and check out the pump. <sighs> Lodge, go sit in the car. This is gonna take longer than I thought. God damn. Bunch of fucking weirdos anyway. You haven't been playing with any of the valves I put on your mom's pumps, have you? No, Mr. Delon. Silas doesn't do anything he's not supposed to do. He's the perfect son. Yeah, I bet that. What's that supposed to mean? Mrs. Crawl, do you think you could ask Miracle Boy here to hold a flashlight for me down in the cellar? I remember it being pretty dark down there. Silas, could you please help out Mr. Delisle in the basement? supposed to mean? I can make you feel real good. Get with the program, Silas. What do you think I made Lad sit in the car while your mother fixes whatever that hamburger disaster she's making up there? I'm gonna shut the door. Get ready.
How dare you insult my mother? What? Silas, did Mr. Delisle touch you? Silas, what did he do? He was dead the second he entered the house. Get cleaned up. Get rid of Lange. You can put them both in the hollow in the field. More importantly, bring his car to the water hole and push it in. Be sure to push it up high enough. You don't want it to snag the last few you dumped in there. Mr. Delal needs your help in the basement. Welcome to my home. You are the students from the university? Morning, Mrs. Scroll. Uh, my name's Seth. This is my girlfriend, Anna. This is Lindsay, uh, Jeff, and this is Bond. I'm very pleased to meet you. I, I got the call earlier about you coming out here to, to paint my house out of the goodness of your own heart. Is that true? For free? I'm, I'm a bit low on funds. This is a part of our course at the university, and we get to paint your house, and as a result, we don't fail our semester. What do you think about it? That is so nice. This whole beauty of a house needs it. It's over a hundred years old. Stay right there. I want to introduce my son to you. Silas, come outside and meet the kids who'll be painting the house. Silas, 
Silas. These are the kids that will be painting our wonderful home. Uh, everyone, this is Silas, my son. Hi, Silas. Silas, what up? So you're here to paint our house for free? Hey, man, it's part of our course. I just told your mom. Jeff, hold up. Silas, we get to paint this house, and in turn, we get uh, credits for our course in university. There are five of you. We don't have room for all of you. Silas, stop it. There is room. Silas, please go prepare some meats for a stew I'll be making for supper. I'll need it unsalted and ready to go before one. Do you have anything for lunch? I'm sorry, I'm not as prepared as I'd like. Oh, uh, Mrs. Crawl, we got uh, we got stuff in our cooler for lunch, and we can always go out for supper. I mean, really, we, we just appreciate the lodging and all. We don't expect to be fed or anything. Well, I'll hear none of that. You're going to need good home cooking if you're going to be working so hard to bring this old house to what it once was. It's a lot of work, you know. No shit. Please, bring in all your things. I uh, promised your professor I could put you up for a few weeks. Silas and I are so pleased that you're here to save our wonderful home. Don't mind Silas, please. He's not one to warm up to people right away. He's also very protective of his younger brother. I guess I can't complain. Please, come in and relax.
one, there's fresh linens in the cupboard. I'll just leave you to it. Thanks. He's not the one I'm worried about. Well, can't we ask my father to help? He doesn't mind. Plus, he's bored sitting at home drinking beer in his shed. And my mom wouldn't mind if he did something with himself. Nah, it's okay. We'll see after a couple of days. Besides, this has to be done by students only. If we uh, subcontract our work to get it done, we can get in trouble with our course credits and stuff. They've got pre-cut moldings at Grossman's. I think we might look out. I scoped out the detail on the house when we were outside. Some of it's the same. Besides, who knows who's gonna be snooping around from the university this week. That's the last thing we need. Some of them nosy bastards wondering why your dad's here. And telling Professor Dodd. Uh, are you guys as creeped out as I am about this place? Like it feels like we're on the set of Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something. Do we even have to stay here like two fucking weeks in this place? It stinks upstairs. Like, what is that smell? Okay, look guys. So they're fucking weird. So the place fucking smells. And so the sun is the weirdest motherfucker we've ever seen. So, we're gonna fucking paint this place and we're gonna get out of here, okay? Hey guys. Why didn't I get an invite to this meeting? What's up? We're a bit freaked out over the house and the people who live in it. Mrs. Crow? I find she's alright. Silence though. Fucking weirdo. Alright. I'll admit I've never seen a spookier place or weirder people, but we're gonna paint this house and we're gonna pass this course, alright?
Thanks. Who the fuck even plays organ nowadays? I know, right? It's so creepy. Anyways, you're right. Let's get to work and finish this place so we can get out of here.
probably around the edge of the municipality, kind of like no man's land, you know? Yeah, I haven't seen any stores on the way in. Where do you shop around here? If you have to know, we, we take care of each other around here. And my son Silas does a lot of gardening for the house. And we do make it out to Digby once or twice a year, don't we? So, light the candles. So you live off the land? That's so cool. My grandparents used to do that. I remember visiting as a kid, and the food was so good. Yeah, how times have changed, huh? Nowadays, all Lindsay needs is a bong and a bone. Guys, cut it off. It's a Christian family, can't you see? Slack off on that stuff. Enjoy this homegrown supper. It's fabulous. Mrs. Carl, this house is pretty amazing architecturally. Uh, like, like who, who built it and, and like what year? Or, or how old is it, I should say? Yeah, it's pretty ornate. There's nothing like this along the shoreline. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Seth, is it? Yep. My great uncle built this house in uh, 1902. He was a big fan of the mansard style roof, I guess. <laughs> Poor man. He went mad shortly afterwards and had to be institutionalized. But still, great uncle. That's horrible, Mrs. Crawl. I'm so sorry. Did he really, you know, go mad? Lindsay, she said you went mad. Why don't you understand? If you lived out here with no high-end clothing stores, you'd go mad too. All right, guys, enough about the remoteness of this place. We're no better than anyone who chooses to live out here. Stuck a bunch of painters, all of you. Hey, speak for yourself. I've heard stories about this place. Have you guys ever heard about the Havelock disappearances? Huh? I didn't think so. Seth, what do you mean stories? What kind of disappearance stories? I know the rest of the municipality has had nothing better to do than to make up nonsense about our town. Please don't believe any of it. Seriously? You're acting so immature right now. Like stories about disappearances? You sound like a boy scout around a campfire. Seth, what kind of stories are those, man? Are they scary? I love that shit. Seth, what kind of story? Like. People coming out here and never getting seen again. Disappearances, you know, shit like that. All of it's unproven, of course, except one. My dad used to scare me when I was a kid, you know? I'm sure if someone went missing for real, the cops would find them. They always do. Such a BS, just to scare kids. Some people get lost in their own backyards, you know? Just last spring, remember? We had, we had tourists out here looking for the nearest mall. Imagine. Mrs. Crow, please don't take offense to this discussion. I find Havelock to be a very beautiful place. Yeah, if uh, you want to live on green beans and pickled pork. <laughs> Wait, then isn't this the place that Ron was talking about? You know, that couple that disappeared in what was it, like, 93? Yeah, he was just trying to get lucky and supposedly brought her down here. Uh, she was down for the weekend from a uh, kid brand and he fell in love with her. They even had his dad's brand new truck too. They never found the truck either. How the hell can a truck disappear? you anything that they just eloped. Probably out living in Alberta somewhere. He didn't have his dad's new truck, you know. Girls and guys are always running off together anyways. Jeff and I almost went to PEI last May to elope, didn't we? That's right, babe. And uh, I'm still up for it, as long as uh, you help me pay for it. There are more stories, aren't there? You're holding out on us, you know, babe. There are more people missing, you know. A lot more. What makes you think Havelock has anything to do with it? As I mentioned earlier, we 
city folk, as I call them. They've got nothing to do with their sad, pathetic little lives than to make things up. I pray to God every day to help such worthless people. Mrs. Crawl, you can't blame people for saying stuff about Havelock if this is the last place that people were seen. Right, guys? Yeah, I bet the cops have probably already searched around this town more than once. My uncle Morris was on the investigative team for the disappearance of a 15 year old girl. That's the case I was mentioning earlier. You better not be making this shit up. I've never heard of a story like that. Not happening back here. Are you sure? I did hear that, but I um, thought it was up in Queens County. Don't worry, babe. I'll, pre I'll protect you from any... Uh mutilating killers in this region. Yeah, I did hear about that when I was at my aunt's house in Maine. Um, not exactly sure where, though. Um, whoever did it mutilated her as well? Yep. That's, that's weird, man. Yep, right here in Havelock. Sorry, Mr. Scrawl, but my uncle saw it. He, he was never the same after. They did other shit to her, too. Horrible things. They found her mutilated not three miles from here. She'd been raped and tied to a tree. She's the only body they ever found. It's all rubbish. Mother, can I please be excused from the table? Of course, dear. Attend to your chores. Such a polite boy. Not one for words too, too much, but he has been the man of the house for. 40 years now. Yeah. Yeah, my knives ready? My fucking knives, did your dad sharpen them yet? Once a month, that's the deal. Are they ready? Good. Call me later when you bring them over. This is Crawl. What kind of stew is this? It's pretty good. Oh, my Silas, he, uh, hunts in the fall. You're tasting some of the best wild partridge from around here.
<laughs> Alright, chill out, guys. I want to propose a toast. Since June, we've painted, you can count them, we've painted six houses since June. I mean, I didn't mind it. I was making little money. I couldn't complain, but what I didn't like was Jeff and Lindsay, Seth and Anna is running around making out every chance I fucking have. Well, you know, little Bond here. All he has is a day with the Palm Sisters. Of <laughs> and with that, I just want to say cheers to a great summer, and I couldn't have done it with a better bunch of friends. We tried to hook you up twice this summer, but you drank too much both times. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you're your own worst enemy when it comes to building up the courage to talk to some of these women. Don't you realize you need to be able to talk when you reach second base? <laughs> <laughs> Hook me up. Hook me up. I got drunk both times because I thought they'd get harder for some reason. Man, I have standards, guys. Besides, Jeff drinks a lot more than I do. I do drink more than you, but I can handle it. Hey, man, it's okay. You can jump in the sack with me and Lindsay tonight. It's been a dream of hers. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks, man. I don't do friends. Besides, that's freaking weird. Like, me, you, and Lindsay naked. What do you want to see anyway, my ass? <laughs> She's early in, she didn't fucking call. I have your knife. You should have called. Hey Silas, why don't you invite me over sometime? It'd be cool to see what goes on around here. Maybe have a beer or two? So you really want to know what goes on in here, huh? Or, you just looking to see what I'm using my knives for? You really want to know that? Huh? Yes, Silas, I do. You don't scare me, Silas. You never have. No! No, Silas! No! Next time, call me! Hey guys, we had an awesome summer and an even better fall. Fuck you. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, we'll start we'll start priming tomorrow, and before you know it, we'll be back. And then I can work on uh, getting Bond here late. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who knows? It might even be before the summer if the planets are aligned. All right, guys, I really need to go first now. See you guys. Hey man, you packing in? It's uh, still early, dude. I don't know. What I do know is that I need to brush the partridge taste out of my teeth. Whatever Mrs. Crawl called it. Anyway, might see you guys later. Alright, man, cheers. Jesus. Oh, hey, man. Airplanes. What are you doing here? I didn't mean to be snoopy or anything. It's just I was just thinking. Don't you find this picture's kind of creepy? What do you find creepy about two thousand year old religious beliefs transferred to an art form hanging on the wall? Hey, whatever, man. I was just looking at it. Sorry if I offended you. Why would I be offended if you looked at my mother's pictures? Whatever, man. Whatever.
that guy's a weirdo. And he's a fucking asshole. cookies in my bed anytime. That was my breath. This one time, uh, our neighbor's army buddy from uh, St. John came for a visit back in 81. He, uh, he jumped off the motang for three days straight trying to hit the bottom. Sometimes he stayed down there for a minute and a half, but I don't think he ever quite made it. It was, uh, it was pretty crazy. Last name, Garland. Can't remember his first name, though. <laughs> I don't know, man. <clears throat> it feels like every time I'm about to jump into that water, it feels like I'm going into a big black abyss. It scares the fuck out of me. Oh man, don't worry about it. I jumped off that thing a thousand times. It's way too deep. No one can touch the bottom. I mean, it's not the bottom that I'm worried about. It's like a rock two inches below the surface. Fuck, I wish I could just get over it, right? I mean, it's embarrassing in front of the ladies. Some chicks were down from Annapolis for a track meet, and like five of the hottest ones were at the mall time. Uh, with, who was his name? That guy who got us the plastic tickets? Sean. Right. Anyway, know how we all thought it was a douche that night? He was there with all the girls, and they were all eating out of his hand. And there I was, sitting in my bathing suit, feeling like a pansy. And the fucking brick knew it. <laughs> fucking loser, man. Hon, do you want to go to bed now? Uh, I think me and Jeff here might have to finish these two bottles of wine. Right, man? Thanks. I'm getting a drink. Good night. <laughs> So you really aren't coming to bed? Well, don't get too drunk. And don't be too late. You know how this house gives me the creeps. Love yourself a little hot water. I want to take a bath later. Besides, I want to help finish the wine. You guys know how much Jeff likes it when I get a buzz on. Crawl and you know you're there to startle me. You excuse me. Did you need anything from the kitchen? Are you hungry? It's okay, Mrs. Crawl. I'm just thirsty. I'll help myself to some water. Not so much into the wine like the guys out there. It gives me headaches. No, no, relax. Stay there. I'll get it myself. Are you, are you sure that's a good idea? No. Let me get that. No, it's okay. Stay there, relax. I'll get it.
This is drinking water, right? Can I pour myself a glass? This is crawl. This is crawl. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, it's fine. I have all the water you want. I'm sorry. I was miles away. Mrs. Crawl, are you okay? You sure everything's okay? You're freaking me out of it here. Yes, everything's fine. Please, drink up. It's okay, really. We'll just call that a senior moment. first thing in the morning for you. Sleep tight. Good night, Mrs. Carl. something special to remember tonight. Jeff, you jerk! God's 
six. I think the sexiest place to live in Canada would be Victoria. The trees are so huge out there and the fucking winters are so mild. You'd have to be insane to prefer the East Coast. It's so fucking damp and brutal down here in the winter. I hate it. You gotta be kidding me, man. You'll spend three times as much on a mortgage out there. That town's built on old money. You don't belong in that class of people, Jeff. Hey, you can't blame anyone for shooting for bigger and better. Shooting yourself in the foot, you mean? Damn. Hey, wine face. I'm going upstairs to take a bath. My back's hurting me again. When are you coming to bed? And slow down on the wine, okay? Oh, and by the way, stop talking about sexy girls that you missed out on when I'm around, okay? What are you worried about? I haven't laid you down yet, have I? Keep throwing that wine back and I'm gonna have to go knock on that weirdo Silas's door tonight for a treat. Go ahead. You think I'm weird sometimes. Something doesn't add up with him. He might be weird, but you keep getting drunk every chance you get, so I might just fucking do it. What do you think you're gonna do out there in Victoria with your degree? You'll be so far down the list of job openings, you'll be unemployed forever. Unless you fucking flip burgers or something. I'm telling you, man. Stay east. Christ, you two can beat a dead horse to death, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> Do you really think we want to move out to Alberta somewhere in some old camp listen to grown men fart? No money's worth that. I want to live by the ocean. Don't worry, sweetie. I'll be along in a bit. Okay. Love you. See you in a bit.
appreciate all this advice you gave me, but I'm going to bed, and you should too. Anna's waiting on you, and she's fucking horny. Yeah, man, I gotta work on the budget. Plus, I haven't had two, three bottles of wine, you know. I'm okay, man, really. I mean, someone's gotta work out the budget here. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I'm out, man. Night, Mr. Accountant. Hey, man, thanks for the talk. If Liz gives you any trouble, uh, give me a holler. <laughs> yeah, right, man. Ciao. Lindsay, darling. Lindsay. 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 Is there room for two in that tub? Is it really bad thing? No problem. I'll be in our room sweets. Hurry up. with this place. Savage beast jerked her under again, savaging her like a rag doll. Its great jaws were studded with 70 wicked teeth designed to penetrate flesh. 
and hold a victim underwater until it drowned. She felt the bones in her forearm grind sickeningly. Seth, <laughs> my dear, aren't you going to bed soon? All the others have retired for the evening, I see. Oh yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, putting back a few drinks, trying to get myself psyched up for this job. It's not every day I get to, like, uh, relax alone, you know what I mean? <laughs> Seth, you know, Silas has so much to do around here. He has a hard time keeping up with the maintenance. Poor soul, he does try. Yeah, I was just, you know, uh, calculating the amount of paint we needed to finish the job. Uh, given the amount of wood we have to replace, we might run out of primer. In fact, we will. Uh, the house is in worse shape than I thought. I'll head over to Digby tomorrow morning and get the rest of the primer we need. On the way back, I'll head over to Grossman's too and uh, get the rest of the wood so we can finish the repairs. I wish you good evening. I hope your bed is warm enough tonight. There's a morbid chill in the air. Oh, I'll just have a few pops of wine. That should get the warm flowing, you know. Since Jeff's in bed, I don't have to share. Well, I hope you won't stay up too late. And please, try not to make too much noise. My, my room's not far from the stairway, and I'm a very light sleeper. Oh, I promise I won't wake you, Mr. Crow. Good night. What's going on with this place?
this album. Do you have any idea how fucking sick and tired I am of being told what to do? Seeing fucking people from out of town come in here like they own the world? Huh? Do you know how long I've waited to open my mother's refrigerator? Do you have any fucking idea? Just opened it and took it. For that, you're gonna pay. You're gonna pay. When I was a small boy, I was taught to obey and respect. I took care of my small brother, my younger brother. I still do. You have no idea what these words mean, do you? Obey and respect! You've never taken care of no one on this fucking earth since you were spewed on it. And none of you ever will. I'm gonna make some sure of that. You can bet on that. taught at a young age to obey, to listen. It's made me a better person than you. It's made me a better person than any one of you town folk. Oh. What are you saying? Shut the fuck up! It's good you cry. Real good you cry. I've been waiting five years for another woman to actually come to the house. Five years. I've been deprived of companionship. 
I've been deprived of the one thing I've always wanted. To dance with a beautiful woman. Not like before, though. Those kids laughed at me before. No one's laughing now, like they were years ago. Those horrible, horrible kids years ago. I wish they were here, tied up, to watch me, to watch me finally have my dance. Those fucking bastards. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're saying. I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, revenge is so sweet. My father laughed the loudest. He laughed the hardest. My father's breath smelling like whiskey, of course. Catching me upstairs under the bed, whipping my ass. There's my mother, screaming. Stop, heard it, my dear, silence. My dad's belt buckle hurt me the most. I was actually with him at the county fair when he won it. He got it from Mr. Wheatley. Do you think he knew he'd use that belt as a torture device on me? Do you think? Ah! I don't think so. The whiskey he drank put those thoughts in his head. He didn't do it on purpose. Uh-huh, not my daddy. Did you know he left and ran away? It's been 38 years. That's what my mother knows to be true. Let's tell you what really happened. You miserable fuck. I told you to shut up. You wanna be a fucking hero? Huh? You wanna be the cowboy? Here. Be the fucking cowboy. Be the fucking cowboy. should have never disrespected me. Disrespected everything my own mother loves me for. That being said, I think I'm gonna still let you in on a deep family secret. Listen carefully. I'm only gonna say this once. And you're the only other person than my father who knows this story. Hot summer night, July 17th, many years ago. My younger brother and I were just getting home from fetching some sugar from Mrs. Hankinson's house. Fuck, was it ever hot out. We heard mother and father fighting. Of course I didn't fucking dare go in. I never did. So we stood in the darkness outside Heard our own father beat and sexually abuse my mother. Fucking prick. I hid my brother's eyes as he whipped her naked backside as she screamed. She was leaning over the kitchen table with his favorite fucking meal, inches from her face. Screaming. Pork roast. His fucking favorite. Mother used to pay so much attention to that fucking meal. She'd rotate it every 10 minutes. So it would brown perfectly. Son of a bitch. Fucking Christ. He'd actually give her a score on her fucking roast. 
Once it was cooked to perfection, father wasn't home. Mother was so proud. She showed it to me and my younger brother. She said it was a 10, and father would tell her once he came home. She was so fucking sure. When his drunken ass got home late, he slapped her and said, Woman, that's no more than a fucking three. A fucking three. I hid my brother's face that night as my daddy gave my mom the whipping of her life. Then we slipped upstairs to our rooms as my father went in the living room to watch some TV. I could hear mom crying in bed because he kicked her ass. I heard her crying and I got up, pissed off like a motherfucker. Boy, was I mad. I went downstairs slowly. I could still hear the TV on, but that son of a bitch wasn't there watching it. I could tell he was drunk because he was outside on the fucking porch talking to himself. Fucking idiot. He didn't hear me open the screen door. Hell, he didn't even hear the planks on the porch as I snuck behind him. <coughs> I could barely lift his toolbox, but when I did, oh boy, I'll tell you, I fucking dropped it on that motherfucker's head. The last thing that excuse of a father said to me was, what the fuck are you up to, Silas? I smashed his nose. I'm sure it broke his neck too. He fell forward on the ground and started quivering like a shot rabbit. His head was bent sideways. Blood was gushing out of his ripped nose and his ears. I'm scared to death, his eyes were fucking bulging out. I know I broke the motherfucker's neck. Just laying there, his legs were twitching like he was electrocuted or something. Boy, was I ever glad to see that fucker dead. I dragged him across the road. I spent the next two hours burying him there. I made it back to bed 3 a.m. Like a fucking trooper. Two weeks later, our mother told us he'd run off. Maybe he sent us something at Christmas. Same story every fucking December. Fuck. I know the truth. My young brother and my mother never knew the truth. Some things are best left unsaid. But this is our night. Our night to dance.
you know, Anna, this is turning into the best night of my life. You've proven to me I'm compatible to members of the opposite sex. I've never done this. I've never danced with a woman. This newfound energy, what am I going to do with it? What do you want to do with me now, Anna? I should drop you off on the edge of town and let you go. I feel like it. But you do know the secret about my dad and my mother's humiliation. <laughs> you went in the fridge. <laughs> I know. I live your pain every fucking day. I know. It's okay. I know. What do you want? Is Mrs. Crawl home? What do you want? Um, I'm doing a bottle drive for 4-H. I got dropped off. This is my street. I was just wondering if you had any bottles you wanted to donate. I got some bottles in the basement. You should come and help me get them. We'll get them out in one trip. Come on.
Those are right over here, behind the furnace. Silas, you were wonderful this morning. I'm so, so proud of you. Did you know that? How's your brother? Mother, why do you ask? Did you sleep well? Silas, of course. I slept like a baby. I never heard a thing all night. With you, on the other hand, did you get any sleep at all? No. Oh my God, Silas. Come into the kitchen. I beg you your favor. Apple crisp. Best to raise us. 
You always did your best. And for that, I will never hold the way you decided to do it against your mother. I love you. Silas, you're hurting me. Let me go. son more than the other. You can't. Rest now, Mother. Good night, Mother. Now look what you've done to yourself.
I don't appreciate all rooms occupied. Mother was stressed, I was stressed, brother was stressed. Next time you try shit like that, you're moving your fucking ass back in here. We never done more than three. When the fuck would you send five? What's the big fucking deal? They were stuck together like glue. There's no way only three would have come. It was five or nothing. You think I'd ever move back here? Where's mother? She's sleeping. Man, this place is a dump. You know mother's getting too old. It's your job now to keep it clean. What are you doing with all the money I send you every month? Clean this place up. If you want the funds to keep coming in, clean it up, goddammit, and get this blood off the floor. I'm not replacing it, so start scrubbing. What a fucking dump. Oh, and tell mother I'll be back for a visit next week and I'll be expecting a clean house. Mother will be seeing fuck all next week. Yeah. 
and I make sure he's okay. Not a drop of blood.